hello everyone. Uh, this is great to be here. I'm really happy um, uh, to be here, and so is Yi Chow. Uh, we haven't done this before, so um, do uh, bear with us if we have a few technical problems, but hopefully it should go smoothly. Um, we, I'm just going to minimize something, then I can see what I'm doing. Right, surely good. Um, we're going to give you a software demonstration and some real background about why we developed this software and what it might be useful for. And I think uh, there are uh, a lot of potential uses for it within, within Cochrane Reviews. Um, you can see we've started, with the, the title screen actually has the uh, page for the apps on it. Um, we have an attentiveness button, so we know if people are looking at the apps uh, while I'm talking. But if you can't, if you absolutely can't resist looking at it in, in split screen or you've got two windows, you can look at the app. We'll be showing a demo of it. Um, if it's, It might crash a little bit if everybody looks at it because the server will get overloaded. We haven't got a server that can cope with the numbers of people listening today. But uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's there. Right, onwards. Right, so we're splitting this seminar into three parts. I'm going to say some things briefly for 10 minutes, which just gives the background introductions. And then we're going to pause for questions from you. And then we're going to move on. And Yi Chao is going to give a demonstration of uh, the actual app in, in practice. Yi Chao has been working hard uh, for quite a long time now on, on as one of the developers that's made the app uh, and done a fantastic job. So she knows it better than anyone else. And then I'll just finish off with uh, a few sneak previews about what might be coming up. So why did we create this app? Well, this goes back to about four years ago where I was part of a, a unit that was set up. We got funding from the UK uh, Institute for Health. Um, and it was to support reviews that were funded by Nas the National Institute for Health Research with a, a steer to, to give a uh, particular focus to Cochrane reviews. And the idea was to add value uh, to make sure re reviews were uh, complex enough to answer the questions and were done uh, well and were clinically relevant. Uh, and th that was our steer. And it seemed from talking to people early on and even experiences before then with supporting reviewers uh, that software is off a sticking point. Um, and at the time, this is three or four years ago, there wa weren't many network mesh analysis being done by Cochrane, while the numbers were exploding in, in the published literature and not, not in the um, Cochrane library, but in, in journals. So it seemed to us that Cochrane really should kind of get on that bandwagon, if you like, and this was something, and it seemed that uh, the software was one of the main limitations to uptake. Um, so we decided that uh, it, this would be a good use of our time and efforts. Uh, and as time went on, I've also developed an interest in visualization methods, and it was seemed nice that if we did this, it could be a format and an out you know, an outsourcing of some of the ideas, I had to try them and implement them in an app. Uh, and that's something that hopefully we'll do and I'll say a bit more about. Uh, from previous work we've done with working for NICE actually, um, which makes decisions on which treatments can be funded here in the UK. Well, I should say, I always get told off for that at England and Wales. Um, we'd, we'd, ha we'd done a prototype software a few years before where you could actually, in a meeting that was debating whether the NHS could afford the particular treatment. Uh, we didn't software where you could do sensitivity analysis on the analyses and update the results in real time. And some of those experiences also inform this. So we think we've got quite a nice way of doing sensitivity analysis that each hour will uh, explain later. We've had some nice compliments uh, about the software and some good feedback um, from non-statisticians, but also we were surprised from statisticians who said, well, you know, you're selling it short to say it's for non-statisticians because it facilitates things and it's a nice interface to use. So, you know, we don't, we, you know, we're not losing face by using it. We think it, it, it speeds things up and uh, is very accessible. So um, we're now sort of selling the software as both for people who haven't got the expertise in maybe WinBugs or R or software where 
does the analysis, but also even if you know those and know they're not the most user-friendly bits of software, we try and put a nice front end on it. So this is actually part of a suite of some other softwares we have, uh, and the websites are all there, and we can certainly share these slides after after the call. Um, and uh, as well as the the, uh, the Meta Insight for network meta analysis is so just a little brief plug. We've also got one for doing diagnostic test accuracy studies that we're also proud of, and some primers on what diagnostic test evaluation is. So they don't do analysis, but they're kind of primers in 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 that area. So uh, if you're interested in any of those areas, please do go and check them out. Um, for the for the geeks in the audience, and I'm I'm certainly certainly a geek. Just to give you a little bit of background about how Meta Insight actually works. Um, our studio, the company who makes our studio, but is also a company, um, made a package called Shiny about four years ago, and it was a bit of a game changer, and I got very excited about it. It allows you to make kind of web software with R, the R statistical language and software as the, as the background. Um, uh, and you don't have to be a software developer and have a great experience in multiple coding languages. So what it we have here is a shiny app where R acts is what's called the backbone, which does all the behind the scenes analysis hard work on an internet cloud. So you don't need R installed or anything. You don't need any software installed. And it even runs some extra programs from there to do things like the Bayesian analysis. But you don't need to worry about any of that. All you need is a browser. So in theory, you could actually do all this certainly on a tablet, and it works great on a tablet, actually. Phone screens are a bit small, uh, but in theory, you could do a network mesh analysis on, on a phone now. And we had the philosophy that there was some support for doing network mesh analysis. People had written packages in R already, and we've leveraged those where possible for two reasons. It speeds us up. Why invent the wheel? Uh, and also because often these have been published with a certain amount of checking and validation. So uh, we, we are kind of if you like, the glue that's sticking some of these things together and putting a nice interface on it. Okay, for the people who don't know what network meta analysis is, and there's a few of you, but not many, essentially it expands on a, a, the idea of a meta analysis where with a meta analysis, you're essentially comparing two treatments and uh, establishing uh, if one is more uh, efficient or effective than the other. When you get to network meta analysis, you are thinking about more than two treatments and uh, if you write those treatments in little circles like this and then start drawing lines between the circles to indicate where head-to-head -head trials have been conducted, uh, you, you start to get networks of trials. And that's what this is here. It's, it's, it's an example of that. I think it's cardiovascular treatments, but don't quote me on that. And uh, the numbers on each line indicate how many trials there are for each of those comparisons. And it gives you a way, it's a generalization of pairwise mesh analysis, and it gives you a way of analyzing all that data simultaneously. Why it's come in quickly after it's essentially after its invention was because it starts to answer some very powerful and clinically relevant questions like which of all those treatments is the best? Um, rather than doing piecemeal analyses and trying to put them together like a jigsaw afterwards, it takes the jigsaw and puts it all together and analyzes it as a coherent whole. And that's, I think, why its rise to prominence has been. It answers a question that we often want to know which treatment should we use for a given condition. So I'm going to go through these really quickly because you're going to see them and it's much more interesting to see them than me to read them out. So we're now on version two. Version one is still online. Um, version two is in beta and it does uh, Bayesian analysis as well as the Frequentis, which we had in version one. So it just adds things. It's not taking anything away. It does network mesh analysis of binary or continuous outcomes, either the raw scale or a standardized web studies use multiple different outcomes. Uh, it just, as I say, frequentist and Bayesian estimation. Don't worry if that doesn't make, mean any, make any sense uh, to you at this point. Fixed and random effect models, just like standard mesh analysis. As I say, I've got an interest personally in graphical methods and I wanted to make the output as visually interesting and helpful as possible. So we try to get as many different graphical displays in, into the output as, as possible. Uh, you'll see that one of the things we can do in these networks is to check that the data is coherent, that things add up. Um, and that's one of the testing some of the assumptions of the model. And we've got routines in there which do that. For the Bayesian, we can rank the treatments which is best. 
flexible sensitivity analysis by this we can exclude studies at a click of a button to see what would happen we all say give lip surface to sensitivity analysis but i think as humans we're all lazy and the more i think we can facilitate some of the things we should be doing the more likely we actually do them in practice and don't go away and have a cup of tea when we finish the analysis and pat ourselves on the back that's time then to scrutinize what we did and check the assumptions uh, that we made uh, um, are sensible and indeed the results are rigorous to, to alternative assumptions and thanks to Yi Chow we have a user guide available for download from the app so that gives some of the details of how to use it although we hope it's pretty self-explanatory and certainly after a demo I think you could get with it 